Leave her alone. Here at the championships opening stages. And then we talked about all the local support. Tommy Fleetwood, second here at number one. Fourth at the U.S. Open, winner in between then and now at the French. Grew up nearby, didn't play a lot here. At nine, it's Knox. Russell Knox misses this par putt. So he will drop back one to 35 for that first nine and one over par to start his championship. Let's jump up to the third. Jordan Spieth off the birdie already hit. Now Hendrick Stenson. Jordan Spieth played first. He laid back from the fairway bunkers as well in very good shape, right center of the fairway. And Stenson shot away. Yeah, watching it closely. Signal was good. I lost it in the graying skies. That's going to be just fine. It appears to me he's got a game plan for this specific win, and he's going to stick to it. Now you need one, though, don't you? You need a game plan. There's no point in going out and just giving it a whirl. You have to think your way around here. This is the second hole. Justin Thomas has it in the fairway. 170 yards, played iron off the tee, Kurt. Man, starts this ball right at the flag, actually, with that hole location on the right-hand side. Little draw. Oh, interesting. He looked like he was set up. His feet, shoulders, everything a little left. Good shot. Well, we've got a little bit of shelter here. Yeah, really well struck there. So five players now under par with a couple of birdies here in the last few minutes. Rose off to a good start there, birdieing the first. Speed the course, making that 18. Would it one? Just his birdie attempt, and let's see if he can get the pace right off the bat. You take a four, the birdie's a real bonus. It's a good line. Great start from Tommy Fleetwood. That'll settle him down, making a four here at the first. The expectation on his shoulders. Big, big crowds you see watching this particular group. And the tee at the tenth. The impulse is going with an iron here, Nota. Yeah, trying to play for position when pushing hard off the left. Oh, and this is not one of his better swings today. Well, a little bit further up, you can see the grass is not as thick, but I think he's not been fortunate enough to get into that wispy stuff. Maybe in a thicker lie, we'll have to find out. This is at the 11th, Matthew Fitzpatrick's second shot, 22-year-old. A great year last year, sixth in the race to Dubai, played on the Ryder Cup team for Europe, not his best there. That is pretty lush on the side of that hill. We'll have to see what kind of shot he comes up with. Back to the first. And number two in the world, Hideki Matsuyama. Trying to open with a birdie. Runner-up to Brooks Kepka at Aaron Hills in the U.S. Open. Matter of fact, he got first, second, and fourth here from the U.S. Open, all in this group with Kepka, Matsuyama, and Tommy Fleetwood. Brian Harmon, the other man in that top four, he plays in about a couple of hours, two and a half hours. This is Rose at the second for birdie. Good speed. A lot of people's favorite this week, Justin Rose, not just because of his heroics in 1998, but he's won one of these majors before. He knows how to do it, and... Uh, I like the ball flight Justin Rose has. Yeah, the Olympic gold medalist. A proud moment for him there. Pretty good run for Tom Lehman here today. And at 12, he makes that birdie to get back to even par. So you see all the pars Lehman had. A lot of people dropping a shot at the sixth. That's really good playing from Tom so far. It is. One for our PJ Tour champions as we get back to the second hole and see Justin Thomas for his birdie here at the second. The easy par back at the first, see if he can cast this one in. 
Yeah, he gets red figures. Good start there for Thomas. Absolutely. It's a, a mental boost to get off to a nice start like that when you're trying so hard to three. And the second for Siwoo Kip. 201 yards of the hole, lying down grain. Very nice lie in the rough. Playing downwind with the lie in the rough a little bit. I think the plan was front edge at best. Flew it a little deeper, but it didn't have too much trouble setting down. Not bad, giving a little jump and downwind, that combo. So much to calculate on these shots in these conditions, Colin. Well, it is. It's just not the light you think about, the wind as well, and how it's going to react on the green. Are they drying out? Are they still damp? There's, you know, there's six or seven points to every shot here. Justin Leonard made a point earlier, too, Colin. He said, but you know, players pay this course the highest compliment and that it's fair. And one of the qualifications from that, in his words, were that your bounces are a little more predictable here at Birkdale than other open road courses. The greens and the green surrounds are relatively flat, and that's what they mean by this. You see that shot there? That did, did what it's supposed to do. It didn't hit any any adverse downslopes or upslopes or whatever and run off. That was, that was exactly where... That shot was aimed and hit and stopped. So many holes carved out just around and amongst these dunes. Just a great protected field to so much of your play. Spieth, good look here, second shot. 168, ball came to rest directly on top of one of these mounds. That would be tough to do on purpose. This one a little left of the hole. Oh, yeah. I walked a bunch with Jordan Speed on Tuesday and Wednesday, and the putting looked great. And his heart to will the ball in the hole is so good. Jordan Speed looked very strong this week. So does that right about now at 10 30. Toast and coffee hold you over to lunchtime. Sideways, it looked exactly like the open when we came on the air four hours ago. It is dried out, the breeze is up. It's ugly weather for tomorrow with rain and wind, so maybe now the best chance to score here heading towards the weekend. Ian Poulter here in his native country leads by one shot, 32, two under on the front. We see a lot of big names that you know sitting there at one under and even. Been a good start with about 40% of the field starting. Mike Tirico along with the seven-time-in-a-row European Order of Merit champion. Hall of Famer, Colin Montgomery, Tom Abbott, Kurt Byron join us in the towers. Nota Begay, Billy Ray Brown, Jerry Fultz on the course. Todd Lewis talking to the players before they tee off. Ed Johnson from the RNA Rules Committee sorts out any issues we need to deal with. So glad you are joining us here this morning. Let's get right back to the golf. Jordan Spieth, terrific second shot. Chance to tie for the lead. Dan, yeah, not a tough putt here, turning a little left. Both fellow competitors miss their birdie efforts. That was a pot. Either a little too much pace or a little too much break. Either way, disappointing for Jordan. That scramble with the 30 at two. A terrific second shot in there. He wants another look back at the read there at three. And stay at one under par. Opportunity missed. This is the 10th, and Ian Poulter's third shot. That was just from under 50 yards. And that is a terrific par save from Ian Poulter, and he will stay at two under par. Obviously not in a good lie off the tee, but he's going to walk away with a four. Let's go to five. And Arban Lahiri with a birdie. All pars until then, so he's off to a good start. 67th ranked player in the world to three. And Henrik Stenson for par. This one slightly back uphill, and like so many putts out here, very little break. For the start here, let's go see Todd Lewis. Todd, who are you with? Now with Andrew Johnston, officially known as B, finished eighth at the Open last year at Royal True. And considering your success last year, how excited are you to kick off the 2017 Open this morning? Yeah, of course, man. Very excited. <laughs> but I know it's a different, different year, um, year on. So I can't expect it to be the same as last year. Still got to go out and play. It's a different course. But I'm looking forward to it. The course is awesome. And 
It's nice and windy, man. <laughs> we were talking about the broadcast, considering the forecast for tomorrow is rain and even more wind. How important is today to put up a solid number? It does help, yeah, because if, if you don't shoot a great one and then you have to try and play catch up tomorrow and it's worse, it's so hard. And if you can, if you can have a good one today and then you have a bit of a cushion in some sort of a way, then you can... You can play maybe something a bit different, maybe take a bogey where you're not trying to push and trying to hit a miracle shot and end up making six because you're trying to make the cut or trying to get further up the leaderboard, so it does help. Uh, you grew up in this part of the world. You played some Lynx golf. What do you enjoy about playing in conditions like this on a Lynx course like Royal Birkdale? It's just different to what you usually play, you know. It's, the, ball, the ball's running a lot. It's usually firm and fast. I know it's had quite a bit of rain. Um, I think you've got to be creative. You can hit... You can hit anything from 140 yards. You can hit a seven iron to a five iron, and that depending on how someone sees it, and that you can shape it a lot more. I just think, I think it's something different, and you can get really creative, man. Do it. Have fun. I know you will out there. Cheers. Thanks, man. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Beef hits the first tee shot tomorrow morning at 6:30. So, join us for that. Did you? Tommy Fleetwood has this for birdie. Now, you see the graphic here, you see if he wants to hit it harder, obviously it's straight. And if he wants to lag it like he has done, he's got to go up the left-hand side. Very good graphic there to show the two paces. That's why it's so difficult to read a putt for someone else, because how hard is he going to hit it? Tier 4, Jason, uh, Jordan Spieth. Signal there was a 6-iron breeze from the left flag, really not moving, but it's up there. That looked good from the get-go, just a half a bat short. No problem with that though, Jerry. No, no, no. The fourth hole plays about 30 feet downhill from the tee to the green. And there's a look at the bunkering. Um, bunker on the right today, getting a bit more action than those on the left with the way the hole is cut. And looking back at the tee, a few clouds drifting below the plane. How's the breeze out there at the moment, Jerry? Not too bad. It's uh, it's actually a temperature has dropped in the last couple hours, just a few degrees. Not too bad. It's not terribly uncomfortable at all. It is open weather because it's still a bit blustery and it's not warm, but it's certainly dry and that's a blessing. This morning was really difficult. Hendrick Stenson going with six iron as well. I never understand why people come to the open and then watch it on TV. <laughs> I'm with you. I, 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 I don't understand that. If you come to the open, get on the course and watch the golf. I think they just want to hear the commentary, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> well, this oh, looks dear. promising in the air. Oh, oh. very strong. <laughs> Stenson is off and running in his title defense as the champ. The busiest but best year. Another solid shot. Ooh. Tremendous shot. Do have that to jump up to two under, get a birdie birdie start. Back to two. Yeah, we've just seen this putt, so let's see if Hideki Matsuyama can figure it out better than Tommy Fleetwood. Not nearly enough speed. Oh, got fell in love with the line and forgot the most important part. <laughs> I mean, that happens to pros, too. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> At one, Shane Lowry, the 30-year-old Irishman, playing in his sixth open. Yeah. He was asking a lot three hours ago to open up with a birdie. Number one was playing like a, a par five or a par six, if you will. It was playing that hard for the first three or four groups. But we see more birdies of late. And Lowry joins the group with a three at number one. And Tom Lehman survived a, a bogey at once, had a pretty good round. Here he is at 14. I beg your pardon, this is at 13. Yeah, just a birdie putt there, Mike, going missing. The man playing in his 21st open. He missed the cut in 98 here at Birkdale and finished 32nd in 2008. Of course, the champion at Royal Lytham in 96, where he beat... Ernie Els and Mark McCumber by two shots. Ian Poulter has the lead here. Five-hour time change between the East Coast 
and here in Southport, England. So it's just coming up to a quarter to 11 in the morning, but plenty of golf left uh, today. The final tee time is 16 minutes past four. So they'll, they'll be playing until 9 p.m. local time, four o'clock on the East Coast. to the fourth and came second interesting club selection there could have easily put it up through that fringe and let it trundle on over but as it is five feet remaining for par this is the 11th tee Poulter with less than driver here yeah he's gonna have to tag this one Kurt even if he's gonna get to the fairway yeah. That bunker down the right side is just over 300 yards, but uh, finds the rough. Shouldn't be terrible. Leaves himself a long way in there. That was, uh, you said he necked it off the tee, and if you hit a wrong club and neck it, you, you know, into that left to right wind, he's struggling. Well, Spieth has made a good start, and he's got another birdie putt coming up. Yeah, outside chance of one here. Not a little bit longer range putt. Shoulder coming off that front right green side bunker will kick it a little left early, then it might die just right at the very end. Playing in his fifth open, he says he's seen a bit of everything now. He knows what to expect. All sorts of different conditions and the way that the golf courses play. And we'll go back to three. And Justin Thomas has a long birdie attempt. Yeah, pretty slow coming back up the hill. And at the very end, it'll start turning just a bit to the right. Right, good speed. Yeah. Eleven. Poulter from the rough at eleven. You're trying to belt something up there. Does a nice job. A tough hole location to get close to from that distance. He'd be happy on the green. Hang on. I think that'll be okay. There's a little ridge you can't see there, a spine that runs through that 11th green that he'll have to deal with. And back over at the fourth hole, Henrik Stenson has this putt as they uh, watch on from the Spectator Village, which is a busy, busy place. Plenty of things going on down there. And Stenson with a putt for a two. Putt that should turn a little left. Plenty of uh, spectators out here as well, and so many natural uh, viewing areas on the sides of these slopes to get a great vantage point to watch this. I guess you call him one of the premier groups today. Chief executive of the RNA, Martin Slumbers, is hoping for over 220,000 people to attend, which would be a record at Birkbeer. short just a three for Stenson who returned to the claret jug earlier this week as a, a tradition at the open back to three and Rose for birdie does it get much easier than this straight back up the hill inside left uh, what a start birdies two of the first three Here in England, two Englishmen, two under par in the early go. Tied for the lead. We're ahead one at four. And now Kim for his par. And one of those putts, Colin, that uh, they're just, you, I heard you describe it, one from Poulter earlier. They're just hugely important, even though it's just an early stage, five foot or six foot or to save par. Well, it is very much so, and uh, he knows it too. Six foot putt fairly simple under normal some conditions but this isn't normal this is the open and he's done a good job and the 22 year old who's ranked 32nd in the world is a level par as they make the walk behind the artisan clubhouse there on the right hand side the artisan club is a, an important part of royal burkdale which we will hear more about as the week goes on 
This is Padraig Harrington for birdie at five. Not to be. Padraig won here in 2008. Shot three over that week. O'Meara, when he won here, he shot even par. A good start for Harrington. Played very well last week. Top five finish at the Scottish Open. Justin Rose on the tee at four. This is a five iron for Rose. Wind hard from left to right, 193 yards, trying to hold it back into this breeze. Wow, oh, wow, air mailed the green there. Where did it finish, Billy Ray? It hit a tree behind the green and, wow. and came to rest. I think he caught a pretty good big break there. He caught the tree and dropped straight down, not into the heavy stuff, I believe. I'm surprised when it said five on because uh, Jordan Spieth hit six, Stenson hit seven. So five. Pulling it left, of course, is going to de deal off the club and make it even worse. So. There aren't many trees on the golf course, so he did well to hit it. <laughs> exactly. There's one lone tree, small tree, just behind this flag stick, and he hit one of the branches and dropped straight down, I believe. Very, very fortunate. From our vantage point, Billy Ray, it looks like he, he's going to be far enough away to at least be able to play a shot there, uh, Justin Rose. Now, Thomas. And that was a six iron for Thomas, and that could influence the shot he plays here. Oh, he's played a oh, beautiful. Shot. Just started left of the hole and just hit a perfect shot. It rode the wind perfectly. This is Stenson at the fifth with an iron. Short little dog leg right, playing for position, playing with a lot of discipline. Not a surprise, I guess. Left center of the fairway here. So many of the players have been talking about that. Staying disciplined, sticking to a game plan. Obviously, Stenson has one in mind. He's hit, uh, what, Jerry, like three irons off the tee already today. Exactly. Yeah, he's, uh, he, like I said, he's got a game plan. He's going to stick to it. Don't need to take a whole lot of chances because the score doesn't need to be that low come the end of the week, it doesn't appear. Colin Jordan Spieth has been pretty much on his game coming off that win in mm -hmm. Hartford at the Travelers. He came in here as one of the favorites. Um, I'm sure through the years you came into the Open as one of the favorites. What's that feel like? Uh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're second favorite to Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, being yeah, in the Tiger area was not yeah. area was not a good thing, was it? Ah, it was a horrible time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Again, an iron for an iron for Jordan Spieth. He's leaked it right, though, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a bit of trouble over there. Having iron in the bag this week, based on the conditions, a lot of them adjust according to the wind direction. Today, Spieth has one in the bag. Right now, myself, <laughs> even me. Lunch, lunch options for later, boys. <laughs> but if you eat those, you can't wear these. No, Justin you Thomas can't. Four. You can't look this good if you eat, eat that lot. <laughs> he thought he was going to come back, didn't he? And it stayed out to the right. But a good par from Justin Thomas. Yeah, it's going to mark, but it's going to decide to putt out. Meantime, our co-leader's at 12, the par 3. Holter tee shot on the way. Uh, starting at the hole, wind pushing it left. Just love the look of Holter, that, that in contention again, mm -hmm. that energy, the good feelings he has from the last couple of months and the return here to Royal Birkdale, where he was the runner-up last time we played the Open here. Four. This would be a terrific par for Rose. Certainly was. Yeah, the break that he had. And now he makes par, and that could have been disaster there for Rose there, Tom. Yeah, and uh, the difference is he makes a par, and he's two under and tied for the lead. 17. Stuart Manley from the greenside bunker, third shot to this par five. Oh, oh. yes. Oh, thank you very much. Stuart Manley going out and playing a great round of golf. Gets him to one under par on the round, one hole to play. This was just a moment ago, Jordan Spieth at five. Downhill or turning right the whole way. Uh, a little 
little too much speed. It's amazing, Kurt. He knew he missed it just about as soon as he hit it, and it mm -hmm. still hit the lip. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I was thinking the, myself there. I was thinking, when I when I walk after the ball, I've missed it, and I know I've missed it. He he walked after it and almost went in. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a difference. All right. Let's see if Kim can make one. Probably learned a little bit from Jordan's putt. you got to keep it a hair further left than Jordan did. Yeah, Jordan started his about a cup outside. This one a little shorter, I'd say a cup outside would be just about right. Speed for that line. Just ran out of speed, Jerry. You see the difference in the confidence as well. You see Jordan Speed's ball's gone gone by three and a half foot there. The confidence. And yet that one, if that had Jordan Speed's pace, it was in. This is his first open for Si Wu Kim. He's only 22 years old. Our defending champ after a superb second shot, Jerry. Yeah, I don't think standing back there in the fairway, you'd have envisioned having a birdie putt between the front bunker and the hole. That's a short list of players who've shot 63 in a final round of a major to win. And how cool that one of them was on the call when the other one did it. Yeah. 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 It'd be great to hear Johnny's thoughts here this week. Of course, Johnny winning the Open here. Should fall right a bit. Good speed. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. He played last week in the Scottish Open. Stenson likes to play the week before the Open. Try to get himself in that Lynx frame of mind. Matsuyama on the tee here at the par 3 fourth. Came over and played in the run-up to the Open at the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open a couple of weeks ago. And that is in the bunker, and it just depends on how far back. Oh, is it plugged? Uh, tough to see, but that might be tricky. Speed for his par at five. No problem there. Occasionally, he struggles with those putts inside of six feet. Sometimes he looks at the hole. Sometimes he looks at the ball while he's stroking it. Good start, though, for Jordan Spieth. One under through the first five. Big hole coming up at six, though. That's a monster hole. Colin, 490 yards today. It is. It's playing into the wind as well. And uh, I was just saying earlier on that it's a par five for the members that see that back tee and then the players, you see this very rarely, walking forward from that uh, to play it at 490. And uh, because of the tees forward, it makes the fairway much narrower than it would be normally. You can now reach the bunkers where normally you can't. Let's move up to the green at one. Yi Kim Chang has this putt for birdie. He gets his open started. And so those birdies starting to roll in a little bit more frequently at number one. Including the 23-year-old from South Korea making his major championship debut with a birdie. He won the Korean Open last month. The re reason he is in this the first year of the RNA is awarding places in the Open Championships to the winner and the runner-up in the Korea Open. Thus... Mr. Chang's in the field, and he's one under. Oh, we're talking difficult here. Pretty For those company. of you who played St. Andrews, you understand what I mean. Three's mostly from the right on the tee shot. It is a little in. Second shot a little more in on the dog leg right hole. That just started right up the middle of the fairway. There you go. The guy who pures it makes this great strong contact. Exactly what you needed there. Perfect tee shot. From Stenson, it was a little bit harder when the wind was stronger earlier to keep the ball in the fairway. Yeah, like those, Stenson there now, Spieth. Yeah, thus far, those, uh, those first, I don't know, hour worst of uh, tee times probably were at a little bit of a disadvantage, but not as drastic as we've seen thus far through round one in years past. Less than driver for Jordan. 
obviously playing for position not to reach that bunker on the left. Well, that started at the one on the right, just curving off it. Draws it, so it should be okay. Yeah, it's perfect now. <laughs> that was about two yards from it. <laughs> Colin, Perfect now. I yeah, like that. You're right, Jerry. Colin, talk about game plan because we've said that so often and the discipline of your game plan as you think about it Sunday through Wednesday in preparation. Mm -hmm. Now it's game time and now you really have to have that discipline to stick with well, it. You have you to have discipline very much so. You see Henrik Stenson who hits the ball further than Jordan Spieth. So you see Henrik Stenson plays this hole very differently. He can almost fly that right-hand bunker. But of course Jordan Spieth can't. So Jordan has to hit the three wood short of it and and, and, and actually hook the ball or draw the ball off that bunker. So <clears throat> just because your playing partners hit the driver doesn't necessarily you have to as well. You know, you've got to play your own game. There's a best way to play every hole, whether you're three over or three under, for you. Forget everyone else, you're playing your own ball. I'm not sure Siwoo Kim's game plan hasn't changed since the round started, though, playing with these two guys. He started off so aggressively off the tee and now starting to play a little more percentage golf. I and mean, that's interesting, and Kurt made the point a whole ago, first open for Siwoo Kim. You see the experience bank continues to grow for players over the years, and they understand what they have to do. Look at right. this look. Mm. Siwoo Kim, I think that ball's sitting down. What we can see there, but he played it pretty well. The, the, the rakes here this week um, leave quite uh, sort of thick grooves in the bunker. Um, which makes it, I think, a bit more difficult. This is Justin Rose at five. Got a ball sitting down in the first cut. 102 yards, Kurt, back into the breeze. Needs to get up. Oh, lands on the down slope. Yep. A little unlucky. Probably <laughs> carried it about two, three or four yards further into that green that he wanted and caught the down slope Just to 12. It just proves how important hitting the fairway is, doesn't it? Sure does. Ian Poulter would be the first to get to three under if this goes. Oh, almost, almost took a look in there to the right. So Poulter's going to remain at two under par. Poulter and Rose. We are in England. It's been a while since we've seen the name of an Englishman on the Claret Jug. And it's really early. But they're up there, and look at that board. That is a major league leaderboard for Thursday morning at Golf Oldest Championship. And in 2019. Let's go back to the sixth and speed first. 216 yards. There is a fair bit of hurt in this breeze from the right. That was a very loud strike. Didn't sound terribly solid. On board, looking at two putts from there, he hopes. To nine, Russell Henley's second shot. Good opening. First nine for Henley. Yeah. Very nice there. You get a look to join the leaders at two under. If not, it's 33 for his first nine. To four. It's be a good par for Matsuyama, having been in the bunker off the tee. Let's go to six. And Stenson's second shot, Jerry. 199 yards, a little below his feet. That climb ah! went quickly and his big left. Hmm. Not where the uh, fans are walking and beyond, so we'll see where it ended up. Go back to five. Yeah, this was a moment ago. Justin Thomas from the bunker, his third shot. And Curdy played a poor second shot from 125 yards, but a good looking shot here out of the bunker. Well, you're going to have to do that this week to have a chance. Get it up and down. Rose now for his par. Remember, he was in the back bunker, so good save there for him. Also off to an excellent start, two under after five. Put in some last minute work with Sean Foley this week on his swing. Doesn't need much work, Justin Rose's swing. <laughs> it's a good one. It certainly is. Excellent. Shot maker. And we'll go back to Russell Henley at nine to get to two under and share the lead. And playing his open 
This open for the fifth time, I should say. Winner at Houston is a, a top 12 this year, the first major, 11th at Augusta National. Good start 33. Good opening ninth. Hard, hard to go really low early on because of no par 5 until the 15th and only the two par 5s. It, it is. It's almost hanging on the front nine and then hopefully you'll get one or both of those par 5s in, in the bag on the back nine. Uh, Here's Jordan Spieth. They all look good, don't they? Mm. Oh. Matthew Fitzpatrick. Sorry, excuse me. Wow. Fitzpatrick, wow. But yes, you uh, you just see Mark Amira finishing behind us here and uh, the first group off and 11 over early on, unfortunately for Mark, but held on there for the last seven holes and it proves that the last few holes are slightly easier. Do something. Stay, stay in the mix for sure. 13. Ian Voltas, second. Part driving in the fairway and long hole over 500 yards today with the uh, team placement and the hole location. And still, it's a par four. Let's go to the 18th group. Yes, yeah, second group to finish, and, and what a performance for the Welshman, Stuart Manley. Has this putt to finish two under par for his opening round. How about that? 68 for Manley, the eagle we saw at 17, the birdie at 18 for a 3-3 finish. He said he's dreamed of qualifying for the Open for many years, playing this championship for the first time, and he shoots 68. Two under par is going to be real good as this day goes on. What a finish, 3-3. Three, three. Mm. Tied for the lead. Now we found Stenson over there at 6. Wow. Yeah, he might have found Stenson, but not his ball, I don't think. <laughs> way above his feet. He can get club on it, but it's way above his feet. Down to the shaft, gripping down. It's going to dart left as soon as he hits it. And that is uh, oh, that's better than average for sure from there. Mm. And a really wayward second shot after that terrific tee shot that he hit. Has Stenson scrambling here at this difficult hole. We'll slide back to five. Hideki Matsuyama is well left off the tee. Try to weave it between those bunkers. Probably won't come out with a whole lot of spin. But it is back into the breeze. Boy, how good is that? That's actually a good place to leave it right there. Maybe slightly uphill. Must have missed his drive because he's uh, he, he wasn't just left, he was short as well. Yeah. That guy's taking irons off that 15. He was right in front of that uh, spectator area they put. It looks like Fenway Park's Green Monster and the monster seats with people standing up on top there. What a great look at the dog leg there at five on that short par four. See Wu Kim at six from off the green. Very nice. Several players during practice rounds take a fairway medal just to first options around the t around the greens when you miss to the sixth. Then Rose on the tee, co-leader. Yeah, going with driver. Oh my God. Uh oh, this one's way right. Well, the marshals will do well to find that because they're nowhere near themselves. Problem over there to the right for Justin Rose. You move up to the green, see what uh, he's going to have to find and then figure out. And Jordan Spieth. I and mean, Jerry, you've said it a couple of times. The the wind kind of get, getting a couple of balls up in the air there, and it's been hard really to dial in distances in some spots for players. I'm seeing some guys having trouble keeping it down, especially coming out of the rough. Just. Uh it's a little unusual, actually, because this spin is what creates the height and ballooning into the wind. And typically, out of the rough, it's easier to keep it down than the... As it is, though, still a birdie putt. For most people, it's a lag. For Jordan, he's trying to make it. But that's got some speed. A little bit surprising, the way we saw the speed early on. 
for Jordan and in general, as you said, with those uh, long putts. A lot of Americans in the field, six Texans, six Ohio natives in the field. 52 Americans total, most of any country. England next with 28. Five. Matsuyama has this for birdie, trying to get it under par early. 52 Americans, that's, that's exactly a third of the field, and so there's American in every group, at least. Matsuyama played the Irish Open a couple of weeks ago, so he's been over here in the UK the last two or three weeks, trying to get ready for this Open. Long putt, but for a, a professional up and down. Stands yeah. Still a little bit uphill where he's standing. The ball is above his feet. Gives the impression it's going to turn left more than it actually breaks. I wonder if that was influenced by what he saw with Spieth's putt running past. Potentially. Mm -hmm. That's not the first time he's done that today either. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Jordan's left himself a difficult one here because uh, coming down the hill now. And difficulty increased by the fact that it's your second putt. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't like missing the first one, never mind missing the second, mm -hmm. is Jordan. So here he is here. We've seen them coming up the hill, breaking left to right. So this would suggest this would come back just on that right lip. That would suggest it. Tough to see it from my angle. It is downhill, but uh, it's an open championship, open speed are not what you would find normally on the PGA Tour events are not terrifyingly fast at all. Well, at least we sort of tried to make it difficult, didn't we, <laughs> for him? <laughs> wish, I, wish I had a little camera so I could show everyone your face. It's just like... <laughs> He makes those very routine. Yes. And that's such a strength of his game. Well, that's, I mean, that's it. That's, you, know, you talk about Jordan Spieth, you talk about holding out from, from that range, and uh, he's the best at it right now. Stenson to drop just one after the mistake with the second shot. Drop back to even par. Plenty of people there, including uh, Tom Lehman, and Steve Stricker, the European amateur champ, Alfie Plant, Siwoo Kim, Brooks Kepka, the U.S. Open champ, all so at even. That's tied for 11th for the moment. Yeah, Poulter has this for a birdie at the 13th. A chance to get to three under par. Good chance, but. Just a par for Ian Poulter, and he remains tied for the lead. Not too far away from Southport. Napoleon III lived here as a young man, and legend has it. He used it as inspiration in the reconstruction of Paris, some of the tree-lined boulevards of Southport. Yeah, pretty cool bags. Six iron for Jordan. Started just a little right of the hole, medium trajectory, turning a little left on the breeze. Location. A good chance for birdie for speed to get to two under. Now go over to the 13th, and Alex Noren has this for a birdie. And a good three for Noren, so he moves to one on the par. Maybe it'll be back to back for Swedes as uh, champion. Uh, champion. Dylan Fratelli, a fellow countryman of another former champion of European events. And that'll be Dennis Hutchinson, who has played here in the Open twice. Dennis, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Kim, and lovely shot there from Dylan Fratelli. 
and the player with a great deal of promise. 1961 you appeared here in the Open Championship, Mr Hutchinson. I, I did too. KT Kim. How's that for a tempo, Van? Oh, very a beautiful slow tempo. Lovely shot down the hill into the 14th green. I'm playing at 188 yards today. The whole 15 paces in and six from the left. It's a beautiful hole, but downwind a little helping from the right. So it can be a beast the other way around. Very friendly flag today. With the wind blowing from the right gives the players a chance to feed it in on the wind and get it in close. I heard Mark Sang. A very talented Thai player, very experienced. Taking it on. Not bad. Have an awkward putt over a bit of a shoulder, but a good shot down the hill. The Thai player, Mark Sang, is plus two. Tied for 40th place, playing with KT Kim and David Duval. 59 shooter all those years ago. Long career. Former Open champion, of course. Oh, he went wonderfully well at the uh, Mint today, wasn't it? Yep. Uh oh. Well, it's not the easiest chip left in the world. Into the breeze is the only thing that will help him a touch there, but that was really was a good club too many. He's got that very unusual follow through Duval where he looks up early. Song. Yuan Song. Teed off at 8.25. Here we are at 11.40. This match, playing with Horsey and Fratelli. Pace of play is fairly slow, but with the conditions early on, it wasn't too easy to to cope with that. Really stiffening a little bit now, I think. That flag is really fluttering. Horsey in all sorts of trouble in the back row to tee. Fourth shot for him. Remember, par four, big one, 505 yards. It's playing today, and that is a most disappointing chip. Still got some work left just to make a bogey. Sam Torrance was in with us earlier on at the van, and he was saying that the, they're using different rakes now for the uh, bunkers, where the grooves in the rakes are further. lie basically in the bunker and maybe you know maybe that's not the case maybe the, the RNA are correct and, and you know making it a bit more of a challenge and yeah. bringing bunkers back to be true hazards good Fratelli. positive stroke from Fratelli there now getting back to that there were I remember when you used to play in the Open Championship in the old days when you got there on the Monday to practice round the bunkers were pristine and you just fix it up at the back of your sand line by the end of the week they seriously were hazards but that's what they should be you know, a good par there for Dylan Fratelli Saves it a couple over, and not a bad score today. It's been a real test. Third of our dedicated three-hole coverage. Holes here, the 14th. We're covering 12, 13, and 14. Just about half a mile's worth. 882 yards they cover, these three holes. And all sorts of humps and hollows to get over here. It's got to pitch this in just the right spot. Oh, he's made a great job of that. Very well played. Breeze in his face slightly. That'll help a little bit. Yeah, I think these guys' short games, though, that really separates them from your average pro, if you like. I was amazed last year during commentary at the, the quality of the, the short game of the top players. Uh, 
Just about two thirds of the way to the pin. There's a little hillock there, which he's got to be careful of. Oh, he's gone aerial. Duval. And why not? Uh, fabulous shot, but he didn't have the wind into him. He could throw it up into the window. 60 degree wedges that they use. I mean, most of us would just, it would come up past your nose. I mean, you couldn't get it to go forward. But uh, really, a super shot he played there, David. Match number 13 comes onto our screens for the first time. Russell Henley, Fabrizio Zanotti, Peter Uline. A couple of Americans sandwiching a Paraguayan. Henley on board the green, coming down the right channel. I'm playing at 175 yards today, this 12th hole, more or less the same direction as the 14th. Play goes maybe a little more to the right. But sort of coming down the breeze, and uh, as you say, you were out there earlier, players are hitting as little as seven irons. That's true, yeah. Ryan Moore and Chris Wood hit actually exquisite shots into here. Both uh, look like they could have actually gone in. Ryan Moore's finishing about four feet to the left, and Chris Moore's about eight feet past the hole, but two fantastic shots. Still a big seven iron for me, Dennis, uh, 175 yards. That's a full-blooded tee shot for me. But. <laughs> Paraguayan Zanotti, current Maybank Open champion. A neat player. Crisp action through the wall. But he's tugged it. Come on, work your way back. That's what I was saying about that pin location. It's quite friendly. There's a little collection area there. When players do tug it, there's uh, Quite a friendly bank there, as we saw, that kicks it back in. Also leaves them an uphill putt. Do need to be careful not to get too complacent with that backstop, though, because just a few yards up that bank is that brutal, thick, open rough. And here's Uline, played so well in France a couple of weeks back in the Paris National, leading the way and just got done. Oh, yeah. Very powerful and aggressive player, and I, I just got a feeling his great pal Brooks Kupka doing so well winning that US Open might just get him going. He has had injury problems, bad wrists, but a good player. Uline, 27 year old from Jupiter, Florida, a long way from where this man hails from. If I had Mark Sang, the tie, kind of claw one back. Oh. Got a piece of it, but not enough of it, as they say. Time to catch up with proceedings at the top of the board. Stuart Manley finishing eagle a birdie for a 68. Fantastic performance from the Welshman. The stalwart Ian Poulter threatening two under, looking good. Matthew Fitzpatrick in a host there of players on one under par. Earlier on, there were 24 players under par. It's gone back to 11 now <coughs> in the group on even par, mentioned by Dennis Hutchinson a couple of minutes ago. Robertson, that group. Richard Bland having a very good season, Van Phillips, isn't he? Yeah, Richard's been around a long time, very solid player. Unusual that he hasn't won. He did lose a playoff years ago, um, but certainly would expect him to win before his career's out. He's had some good chances, hasn't he, of late? I may have just spotted the name of Luca Cianchetti on there as well, the uh, very talented Italian amateur, the winner last year of the European Amateur Championship. That's why he is here. He's qualified for the Open. This is Fratelli down the hill into the 14th. Just have a look at the flags on the left of your screen, give you an idea what the wind is doing. It's a little more crossing than I thought. There's actually a little bit of help off the right on 14 as opposed to 12, which is straight off the right. Um, certainly this morning, Chris Wood and Ryan Moore both hit soft seven irons into 14 as opposed to they seem to be leaning on it a bit more into 12. So I think the wind's just helping a touch on 14. So ranked ninth in terms of difficulty out of 18, midway through those rankings, 19 pars, four birdies already, and two doubles.
back in uh, 1998. It was ranked 10th, and the average there was 3.249. So it's playing true to form. Looks so like he was trying to hold it up a little bit. Very good shot, though. Again, that shoulder to put across. It's safely aboard. First look at the, the talented Indian player, Shiv Kapoor. Interesting follow through. On a downwind shot, punching it forward, using the ground rather than the air, and it's effective. That's it. You couldn't argue with that result, could you? Whoa. Fantastic. Man in the grey, two-tone grey, David Horsey. Made his bogey five on the 13th in the end. Hard work bogey that was. Bounce back. Could be. Good shot. Busy and Zanotti looking for a two at the 12th. Go on. Oh, you so and so. We've seen a lot of players in that little alley at the back of the green there, Dennis, and they've all left it, well, pretty much all of them have left it short, right. Well, he was very unlucky then because, I mean, it was trying to get into the hole and just sort of rolled around the lip. Good effort. Yeah, struggling there at six over. I've yeah. got half a 40 yards. Uh, really don't give you any pause here, do they? You've got to work for every one of them. Oh, it's getting bigger by the moment. This is the one, the Open Championship, the one they all want to attend. Extremely well organized. All the streets are coned off. The championship, you can move through the town quite easily. And they're being marshaled and shepherded. And looked after and refreshed all week long here. It's superbly organized. Height of summer, eh? Waterproofs, <laughs> three layers. <laughs> we were watching uh, Jason Duffner earlier on, chaps. Uh, he was wearing a, a beanie hat and short sleeve shirt. Nice combination. Well, that also keep your head warm, you should say warm. And I thought that was more your feet. Keep your feet warm and you'll stay warm. But who knows? Tony Finau there, the tall, very powerful and long-armed American has got to uh, one under par. Watched him hit his drive at 13 yesterday. He was in the air for eight seconds. Hmm. Hang time, they used to call that. Oh, when word. John Daly arrived, you remember, that's when hang time became the word. He was playing with... James Hahn, who was first alternate. They were on this tee, and I stood here with them. Bit of a crowd watching. And James Hahn's phone went off, it buzzed in his pocket. And the news came through, he'd got in. And Tony Fino announced it to the crowd, and they all cheered. What a nice moment. Mm. Well, interesting, just an iron off this tee. Remember, it's 505 yards long, but the breeze is helping. Well, maybe it's a little more than a breeze now, but good shot there. Just in the first semi-cut, so good as gold. Fratelli's left his iron shot a little bit short, putting from off the green here. All about the pace, obviously. Just coming shy of the ridge there, another couple of feet, and it would have rolled down quite nicely, but left with one of those that we don't like. The ones you shouldn't miss, eh? That's why we don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> it's the extra pressure. <laughs> oh, dear. Too much time to think in this game. I once organised a monthly medal at a golf club when I was the pro, and I said, right, we're going to have a hair and tortoise event. Every minute over three hours that you play, you're doctor shot. 
It's obviously a lot of pressure on the first three ball out. They got run in two and a half hours. And the scores of the winners were better than normal. Maybe, right? that, maybe they show. could introduce that system onto the European tour. I think three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an interesting exercise to do. The last people came in in three hours, ten minutes, and they got docked, but because okay. they couldn't go anywhere because they were. And as you say, up. the scores got better. They were better yeah. than normal. Yeah. Less time to think, less time to put yourself off. Levy, very exciting, aggressive player, the Frenchman. Slightly down the grip, you can see gripping here, so this little punchy shot. Remember the breeze coming across them from the right. Come on, bounce. Back you go. It's okay. Another exciting French player. Enigmatic character, this one. Mike Lorenzo Vera. Uh, wonderful recovery. Another man who played very well in the French Open at Paris Nationals in his third, I think, on his own. Really played wonderful golf in the final round. Another yo-yo man, on and off the tour over the years. Unusual character. Very expressive. Webb Simpson, past US Open champion, of course. Suffered a little bit with the new anchor putting ruling, but he seems to have got the hang of it of late. Certainly putting better this year. Lost in a playoff at the Phoenix Waste Management. Very individual follow through. Aha! Uh -huh. I've just seen a few ones like that on this particular hole. Good shot. I'll give you a two. It's the kind of swing you see on a Saturday morning, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pinball wizard. After a bad Friday night. Brandon Steele. World number 52, Brandon. Tackling this 12th hole. Win from the right with, remember. Very late hit, wasn't it? Just got the hands back in time. Nice. So that's a group number 14 of 52 three balls competing over the first two days here. Back to Fratelli. Unusual routine, Dennis, looking straight mm -hmm. on and then getting up to it. The ones you shouldn't miss. Drop shot for Dylan. Fourth of the day. The ants continue to stream in down the runs, the channels between the dunes here. The fairways nestled nicely amongst the dunes at Royal Birkdale. A joy to play this course. <coughs> Tough test, but fair. Stuart Manley. Sharing the lead on one under. 11 players, just 11, under par. Todd Hamilton. Another former winner of the Open Championship there. Lowell par. Chris Wood in with a 71, one over. And there's Luca Cianchetti, burly Italian. Mark Foster. Been around a long time now on the European Tour. Darren Fickart, 72. Up and down round from Darren. Joe Berg Open winner. There's a shift of world looking for his birdie. We saw that second punch up and let it run up the green. Oh, you hate to see good shots wasted. That is a shame. Don't get too many chances like that, do you, Dennis, on these big par fours? Yeah. Got to take them. Stands, the bleachers, if you like, being filled steadily through the day. Just approaching midday here. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of hardy souls there, too. Kim in shorts, which yeah. I'm surprised at. 
Yeah, they're pretending it's summer, aren't they? Should be, really. There were some strawberry sellers around the course yesterday. It was nice to see. I noticed that, yeah. Wimbledon styley. Frenchman. Charles Howell III from America and Shiv Kapoor from India, underlining the international nature. Not just of the Open, but the, the, the tours these days. Global golf. Yeah, I'm uh, sure it won't be long, possibly, before we just have one world tour like the tennis, the ATP world tour. It's quite unusual in golf that we have so many different tours, Japanese tour, Asian tour, European mm. tour, PJ tour of America, obviously. Well, do you remember Greg Norman attempted it a few years back, mm. didn't he? With, uh, what, Kerry Packer, wasn't it, in I Australia? I so, yeah. yeah. But talking about that as we watch this shot down the hill to the 14th, was every week there are about 5,000 professionals wishing they could play some and there's no tournament for them. Mm. So it, and that's why you get a very floating population in professional golf. And I think, I'm not a stats man, but they tell me it's about 17% of professionals that have gone and make a career over 20 years, but the rest fall by the wayside because it's very, very difficult to get onto a tour and then to find the events to play in. Number of players missing that green on the left today. It feels like a crime, really, when you've got all of the green on the right to work with, doesn't it, Van? I mean. Yeah, I think, you know, certainly this morning watching Chris Wood and Ryan Moore, they played this beautiful holding shot. And I think some of these guys are letting the ball swing in on the wind. And that's where they're coming awry. I think you really do need to put a little bit of cut spin on it just to ensure that it doesn't uh, get away from you there, as we're seeing. So if you're going to approach a cut shot like that, a hold up shot, what's your main tip? for someone watching now how do you execute that without going into too much detail here sure i mean i think it's got to be face dependent you know i mean if that face is slightly open to the path you know that you're going to put some cut spin on it so certainly whenever i attempt this shot i just put all of my focus into holding that club face through impact and does that mean holding on a little firmer with the left hand grip De definitely yeah okay thank you good tip good example there that club head never turned over, did it? I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's, uh, oh, it's just long, isn't it? Well, that was a bit left as well. Yeah, just pulled get, it, perhaps. Yeah. yeah, you get a turning on the breeze, it's going to go like an extra club. That's for sure. Get, oh, oh. Get. Hmm. You've seen that so many times this morning so far on this, this hole. Hard to keep it high enough on that left side. Here's the rugby fan from Biarritz. <laughs> Mike Lorenzo Vera. Please start it down the right. <laughs> He's aiming there. Well, it's squaring up now, though. Oops. Bit quick. It's gone left as well. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Nice kick off the bank on the left-hand side for Webb Simpson. All the way down on that long, long-handled putter. Tap it in. Take your breaks. Enjoy them. Tee shot wasn't that bad, after all. No, it really wasn't. Just came off the bank on the left. Not a bad way to play it. Justin Rose, Jordan Spieth. The cream is rising. Ian Poulter there, battling hard. Three holes to go. Still only 11 players under par. <coughs> I've just seen that Alfie Plant, the amateur, is dead one under par, so going very, very well. He's just won the European Amateur Championships, uh, Dennis, uh, at Walton Heath on the old course there. Oh, yeah. A tremendous effort. Something like 14 or 15 under par to win that, and Around then there. surviving a five sure. hole playoff against two Italians. Wow. Yeah. He's got some bottle. I'm not getting more than a hybrid there, I don't think, for Big Webb down. Simpson. That was definitely the play earlier today. Chris Wood took a driver and took the hole on and drove it 345 straight into that cross bunker. He was absolutely dead, so 
some sort of rescue or three woods definitely the play off this 13th tee today with that wind behind we've seen several iron shots and that is what Livy is doing and you give it such a rip it's such a free swing he really enjoys it too I love that pro tracer too it's, it's beautiful it gives you a good idea of the flight but lobbed it straight in the bunker. Yeah, he's pushed and it, that unfortunately. he will hate. <laughs> it's like a little sausage, that bunker, isn't it? It's only five yards long and like two yards wide, but it's such a devil. With miles of grass in which to land, it finds a tiny patch of sand. It and has me offering up my soul. <laughs> the golf is lament. You're a poet and you don't know it, Dennis. It is amazing though, isn't it? If you were aiming for a bunker that was five <laughs> yards wide, you'd never hit it. Never. Not in a million years. Talking about poems, there's a legend in the clubhouse on the, on the wall. It reads, as the earth is not meant to be carted away, the divots you cut in the course of your play should be neatly replaced by your caddy or you with their roots to the earth and their blades to the blue. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Isn't that nice? In the clubhouse at Birkdale. What a clubhouse that is. That's an art deco rounded front. Yeah. So distinctive, isn't it? Amazing, yeah. Looks like a ship at sea. Yeah. Well, on the 12th tee. Let's see what I am that it can do. Well, Alfie Plant, one under, and that's really good golf today. <laughs> Great clouds overhead. Cool, breeze blowing nicely. He was interviewed after he won that European amateur that in a second let's watch the shot first that's a hold up shot isn't it it certainly looked that way didn't it hi selfie <laughs> he was so happy and smiley he said uh, yes i'm in the open championship now woods no not woods garcia rose let's have him <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said yeah, well, i see he's got about 150 of his mates <laughs> have come up and they're all staying at the buttons holiday camp or something yeah to yeah. come and support him which is marvelous Great, great story. Very talented Wesley Bryan. That'll do nicely. Third member of this group is Anirban Lahiri. Doesn't seem to have quite found his feet yet on the PGA Tour. Lots of early wins in Europe really looked like he was going to shoot to stardom. He's playing solidly, but as I say, he's not, not quite found that same kind of form that he had in Europe. Very good winner on home soil, this man, isn't he? He and SSP Charizia always seem to battle it out for the Indian Open. Seemed to start it way right and asking him to come back and it never did. Ooh, that is no fun at all. He's got to hope that's come back in the sand, I reckon. Yeah, I think he was a, a little bit optimistic there asking that one to come back. It was uh, about 30 yards to the right. Yes. You're watching the dedicated, exclusive three-hole coverage that we're providing at this year's 146th Open Championship, holes number 12, 13, and 14. That's the progress of uh, Anirban Lahiri. His progress so far as he marches down the 12th. And his fellow countrymen with a job to do here so it's the same sort of shot as beautifully as well as we saw David Duval pull off a little earlier. As you were saying, Dennis, I think with that wind in their face, they're feeling more confident to take that lob shot on. He also had a nice couple of stoppers there with the other two guys' yeah, golf balls. Yeah, they managed stopper. to miss both of yeah. them. <laughs> flora and fauna around this golf course not much in evidence today not the uh, fauna anyway the birds are walking today i think dennis they certainly are 
I remember this whole way with the 12th. And uh, the old 17th used to be a par 3 from uh, way up above what is now the 17th, or it used to be 16th. So, uh, wonderful story about the similar one to this. And Dale Hayes and Peter Osterhaus were playing. They were in the top 10, and he kept missing the fairways left. And Uncle George Bloomberg, I think you met Mr. Bloomberg back home, maybe. On the crossroad, uh, the walkway across, Uncle George timed his walk. He was furious with Dale, said, you are allowed to aim further right, you know. Because <laughs> he was in the left hand rough all the way around the court. Dale Hayes, of course, led the order of merit here in Europe many years and a famous South African golfer. We shall be hearing from Mr. Hayes at some point during the week on our three-hole channel here. His uh, rather large presence is it's around right. Royal Birkdale at the moment. Yes, he really hasn't gone on that diet he promised to. So it's a man with immense energy as we watch Webb Simpson. Second to the par four. 13th now. Very quick action. Tall man. Okie dokie. Pits it a little too far. There's lots of quite nice backstops around this course, actually. A lot of the greens are surrounded by banks, but you do need to be careful. If you go just beyond those banks, there's a lot of thick gorse and heavy rough waiting, but if you are clever and use the contours, you can feed a lot of shots back into the green. Kapoor to get out of jail, as we say, with a three at 14. Take it out. Confirm. I'm just gonna, you know, what uh, Van has just said, I think it's very true. And that's where the really good links players are so aware of all that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people can get really cross about what's going on, the bounces you get, but the good players know exactly how to use them. Alfie Plant in Dreamland, under par in the Open Championship. Pretty good chance here as well. The Sunbridge, Sunbridge Park man. A very good stroke. Russell Henley trying to find the 14th green. Aim on that crane, I reckon. Just hit it there. Very streaky player, Russell. When he gets the putter going, he can be phenomenal. Shot a couple of 63s to open up when he won the Sony Open a few years ago. Really does go on some birdie runs. Peter Uline, the son of Walter Uline, former boss of Titleist Footjoy in America. Not short of a golf ball, this man, then. No. No. Did a lot of work at Bradenton in Florida, where their headquarters are. It's very brisk for a tall man, isn't it? Mm. Very long hitter. Yeah. Fourteen back to the other par three that we're covering on this channel, the twelfth and Wesley Bryant. To be aiming way left. Big turn at the end here, Dennis. Well, yeah, we've seen that, but he really looked like it aimed, but he didn't really hit it where he was aiming. He sort of pushed the putt, didn't he? Seemed like the ball immediately came off the putter to the right, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did, yeah. The Paraguayan, Zanotti. Unusual to see Zanotti struggling, very solid swing. Generally very consistent player. 
one of the shortest players out there, not necessarily in length, but he's five foot seven. We don't talk about height, Kim. Don't we? Okay. No. <laughs> you've got an advantage, Van. You, know, you, you get the rain last. Now, you, now you've told everyone that I'm short, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> not really. You're not at all. You're not short on talent, mate. I tell you that. Jordan Spieth, hello, is in charge by one, three under, just nine holes played for Jordan. Birdies at eight and nine. And one at the second as well, not a drop shot in sight. Two good birdies, eight and nine, even though the wind is helping them, not hurting them on those holes. And you don't want to play golf with Tony Fino, then? Definitely Van. not, and no, I'll be very jealous of that leverage. You get a bad neck saying hello. Simpson. This is the back edge of the 13th green. Whoa, baby. Hold on. Nine feet six, the stint meter reading on the greens, which is kind of medium pace, but they don't uh, cut them too short on these seaside lynxes, do they, Van? I, I thought you were talking about Tony Finau's height there from. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> but no you're right if the wind gets up and the greens are any faster than around 10 they would really struggle Dennis when you played in the Open Championship you know in the 60s I mean the green speeds then were, were they slower then no, I would think they would be about the same speed as this yeah I'm sure yeah mm. this shouldn't be good. I would think Lynx courses green speeds have probably stayed as the Dennis same. says pretty much the same I think it's the you know the more parkland inland courses yeah. where now they get them at 12 and 13 and I think maybe historically they were more That's 9 right. yeah. or 10 oh. yeah and definitely yeah. Yeah. And there the difference is amazing but I'm also not so sure for the club members they should get them that fast no. I really don't think you know especially these guys can control the length of the ball they hit into the greens you get the you know ordinary club member behind only puts it off the green when it's 12 or 13 on it. I if, agree Very deliberate backswing. Compact action. And that's a familiar story for us today. A lot of golf balls finishing at the back edge of the green there. Gary Woodland, former World Cup winner with Mac Kucha over in China. Now here's a familiar figure. Darren always very eloquently dressed Beautiful golf shoes there. I'm loving those black and white spats. He's really struggled with his game uh, over the last two or three seasons. So nice to see him back here at the Open. Four over par, Darren. Big D. Yeah, it's a sort of super perfect game for this, of course, an Open champion, but. He does get very hard on himself. He's not easy on himself. And come on, there you go. Not bad at all. He still works so hard. He hits a million balls. I remember talking to Billy Foster, who caddied for Darren for a long time, and Billy was saying, you know, he really was his worst, his own worst enemy at times. Um, he had so much talent, and as you say, Dennis, sometimes just too hard on himself, which can lead to some slumps eventually. Oh, for sure. Here's a man, young man that I rate very highly. He's at uh, Florida State University in America. His name is Harry Ellis. He's the amateur champion, British amateur champion, if you will. He won the final at St. George's recently. I was down there to watch it. He was four down with five to play. You know the 14th at St. George's, mm -hmm. out of bounds, right? Yeah. Dustin Johnson's the famous five, yeah, that's right. He's a foot from going out of bounds with his second shot. Went for the green, wins the hole. Three down, three to play. Took the guy to the 18th, the, um, the Australian, and won it at the 38th hole. Mm. Very impressive. And it really is. And the Australian guy didn't play that badly. Levy. Oh, a little, little too much pace on that touch. You can see the huge black line on the ball. There's so many players like to use the line on the ball these days. Of 
with a smile on his face all the time. Yeah, he's good fun, isn't he? Good value. Back at the 14th, a long touch here from the front of the green for Peter Uline. It's uh, that's only about 15 paces. Get in. Oh, cute. Oh, I mean, everything but going in there, wasn't it? Unbelievable. A few more conflicts for breakfast. That was in, wasn't it? The thing that really hurts is those tiny little half-inch tap-ins. They count <laughs> as a whole shot. Well, you remember talking about tap-ins, Halo, and with the little one when he missed it, and the shot cost in the open. In he 83, I believe, 83 wasn't it? Yeah. Out. Down among the sand dunes on the Sefton coast, Royal Birkdale Golf Club. 146th Open Championship. The view that no one wants to see from bunker cam, especially if you're not, if you're in there. Noren, Henley, Plant, and Co. at one under par, sharing fifth spot. 13 players under par now. You get an impression of those slightly wider rakes now. The bunkers there, Van. Yeah, you can see that they're quite deep rivets. Yeah. As we were saying, uh, definitely will make the shots more difficult. I just find it an interesting decision to make, to change that, that, that way of uh, raking. It's like when they cut the grass at the Masters against the players mm. into the fet from the tee shots there. So just another example of the committees deciding to try and make these major championships more difficult than your average tournament. They don't have to try too hard to make it difficult here, do they? No, for sure. Which is wonderful. I mean, very it. fair, though, Dennis, this course. Oh, yeah. Very, I think it's splendid. Terrific golf course to play. In these days of info overload, we've got a new stat here the green firmness statistics. I didn't quite understand that. Just I don't want to understand it, I don't think. It's in gravities as we watch. A the chance. From Gary Woodland. How many times have we seen that putt? The green firmness has dropped from 127 gravities yesterday to 113 this morning, Van. Very you're interesting. Pleased about that, aren't you? Yeah, we'll probably make a song about that. <laughs> Let's go to the top of the hill. <laughs> uh, looking from the green back up the hill to the tee. It actually doesn't look that high above, but it really is a long way above the green. You can check those flags on the left of your screen to see what the wind is doing. Sort of a bit of a lazy flap, but I think it's a little more breeze than you believe. Simpson teeing from the left side, trying to use the right channel here. Yet another one goes left and long. And into the little pod bunker. I wasn't sure if it wanted to go in there, was it? Yeah, it, was, uh, it, yeah. it did a little helter-skelter. <laughs> Harry Ellis for birdie. Oh, nice try. It just seems everybody's reading that putt low, isn't it? Yeah. Un Under-reading that putt, yeah. Still sitting down a lot of the address position. He's out of that early, and just, we know why. Uh, he just stood up out of it, didn't yeah. he? I mm. mean, a big tall man. You have to stay with the shot, don't you? One of the great things about this game, you just can't get out of the way. You mustn't create the position to do it either. Now, this man gives it 110%. I hate that word, by the way, but anyway, that expression. He does, though, doesn't he? He really gives it some. He seems to be going way down the handle here, so obviously attempting some sort of punch. It's a disease, you know. <laughs> Left on 14. <laughs> True. It's infectious. I think the players are just not giving the wind enough respect here. As I say, they're, they're in that little sheltered area at the back of the tee there, and they, they're being too aggressive. I think that's the trouble. You, when you get there, you can't really feel the wind because mm. you're way back in the, 
Bill Sardier, come on, Darren, let's see if he can make it too. At 12. Should come a bit from the right. Not enough. But he came out of that putt very quickly as well. I think when you've played poorly for a couple of seasons, the confidence is very hard to get back. It's not so much the physical ability that you lose, but that the, the difference between turning up and really believing that you're there to compete. That is so sound. That is exactly correct. Darren Clark, Gary Woodland and Harry Ellis playing together in Group 16. Next up, we're going to have Podrick Harrington, Pat Perez and Thomas Peters, another very... Exciting three ball match 17 soon coming to the 12th. Spectators. One of those days where you can't quite decide what to wear. How much stuff do you bring with you? Uh, they certainly expected better weather than they're getting. That lot there. Powerful hitter Gary Woodland. Watch how deliberate this backswing is. Very measured, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's tucked away left. Well, that's okay. Stay there, that's fine. All the dust and everything on the golf course. I mean, it's, the course is looking beautiful. I think the, that deluge yesterday has actually helped a lot with the condition of the course. I think it was teetering on being slightly too firm. Had they not had any rain come Sunday, I think they, they, they could have been struggling a little bit with the firmness of the greens. But as Kim was saying, the gravities have now dropped. Yes, <laughs> I like those gravities. Plant from long range. Very good putt. Uh, you rolled the ball beautifully at 12 and rolled it very well there again. Well, that, that has <laughs> not, Mr. Plant, though. Sorry about that. Wesley Bryan. Oh, the Bulls have rolled the ball really well. Strong right hand grip. I noticed that in practice actually followed Wesley Bryan and Ryan Moore in practice. Right, now let's see what sort of shot we're going to have here from the back of the 14th, out of the rough, which is not giving him any help at all. Firmly played and extremely well done. Get in. That was exquisite, wasn't it? Mm. Exact opposite of what we've been seeing from some of the other players who've chosen to lob it in the air. We saw the ground route there. Can he read? Can he go to school? Oh, steady. They've got to be within two. They've got to be on your line of play. Within two club lengths of the green. I really think it should bother him. I think it would be just almost kind of in his eye line. Good choice of club here, though. Something I never noticed about the greens here at Birkdale while I was playing, because... The they're relatively flat by modern day standards as most links courses are but around the surrounding edge of them on, on the apron it's like the crest of a wave they go up and down up and down all the way around and they're virtually all the same all 18 it's really quite unusual there's not one swale there's lots of them Clark's woes continue I was optimistic for Darren today he had a reasonable start it seems like the round is going much the way of the last couple of seasons. So I've had a little break, been out of the commentary box, come back in. I was saying to the chaps earlier on that it's really not that cold outside, it's really quite warm. And it was quite warm at the start of the day, but it has got chilly as the day got on. The weather report is right, the temperature is dropping out there. So it's being a cool wind because it's gone from a breeze. Definitely a wind out there. Lahiri makes a terrific two. 
well deserved after that iron shot. Stops the rod of four bogeys. Looks to be a great three wood there from Harrington. Definitely the right club from this tee. I watched Chris Wood this morning hit a perfect drive 345 yards straight into the cross bunker. One, if that had Jordan Spieth's pace, it was in. This is the first open to see Wu Kim. He's only 22 years old. Our defending champ after a superb second shot, Jerry. Yeah, I don't think standing back there in the fairway, you'd have envisioned having a birdie putt between the front bunker and the hole. That's a short list of players who've shot 63 in a final round of a major to win. How cool that one of them was on the call when the other one did it. Yeah. 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 Be great to hear Johnny's thoughts here this week. Of course, Johnny winning the Open here. Should fall right a bit. Good speed, right in the middle. Right in the middle. He played last week in the Scottish Open. Stenson likes to play the week before the Open, trying to get himself in that Lynx frame of mind. That's the Allen on the tee here at the par three fourth. Came over and played in the run-up to the Open at the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open a couple of weeks ago. And that is in the bunker, and it just depends on how far back. Oh, is it plugged? Uh, tough to see, but that might be tricky. Speed for his par at five. No problem there. Occasionally, he struggles with those putts inside of six feet. Sometimes he looks at the hole. Sometimes he looks at the ball while he's stroking it. Good start, though, for Jordan Spieth. One under through the first five. Big hole coming up at six, though. That's a monster hole, Colin. 490 yards today. It is. It's playing into the wind as well. And uh, I was just saying earlier on that it's a par five for the members that see that back tee and then the players, you see this very rarely, walking forward from that uh, to play it at 490. And uh, because of the tees forward, it makes the fairway much narrower than it would be normally. You can now reach the bunkers where normally you can't. Let's move up to the green at one. Yi Kim Chang has this putt for birdie. He gets his open started. And so those birdies starting to roll in a little bit more frequently at number one. Including the 23-year-old from South Korea making his major championship debut with a birdie. He won the Korean Open last month. The re reason he is in this the first year the RNA is awarding places in the Open Championships to the winner and the runner-up in the Korea Open. Thus... Mr. Chang's in the field, and he's one under. No, we're talking difficult here. Pretty For those company. of you who played St. Andrews, you understand what I mean. Breeze mostly from the right on the tee shot. It is a little in. Second shot a little more in on the dogleg right hole. That just started right up the middle of the fairway. There you go. Guy, guy who pures it makes just great, strong contact. Exactly what you needed there. Perfect tee shot. From Stenson, it was a little bit harder when the wind was stronger earlier to keep the ball in the fairway. Yeah, this, with Stenson there now, Spieth. Yeah, thus far, those, uh, those first, I don't know, hour worst of uh, tee times probably were at a little bit of a disadvantage, but not as drastic as we've seen thus far through round one in years past. Less than driver for Jordan. playing for position not to reach that bunker on the left. Well, that started at the one on the right, just curving off it. it draws it, so it should be okay. Yep, it's perfect now. <laughs> that was about two yards from it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Colin, perfect so, now. I yeah, like that. You're right, Jerry. Yeah, Colin, talk about game plan because we've said that so often and the discipline of your game plan as you think about it Sunday through Wednesday in preparation. Mm -hmm. Now it's game time and now you really have to have that discipline to stick with it. Well, you have to have discipline very much so. You see Henrik Stenson who hits the ball further than Jordan Spieth. So you see Henrik Stenson plays this hole very differently. He can almost fly that right-hand bunker. But of course Jordan Spieth can't. So Jordan has to hit the three wood short of it and 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 actually hook the ball or draw the ball off that bunker. So <clears throat> Just because your playing partners hit the driver doesn't necessarily you have to as well. You know, you've got to play your own game. There's a best way to play every hole, whether you're three over or three under, for you. Forget everyone else, you're playing your own ball. I'm not sure Siwoo Kim's game plan hasn't changed since the round started, though, playing with these two guys. He started off so aggressively off the tee and now starting to play a little more percentage golf. And that's interesting, and Kurt made the point a hole ago, first open for Siwoo Kim. You see the experience bank continues to grow for players over the years, and they understand what they have to do. Look at this look. Hmm. Siwoo Kim, I think that ball's sitting down. From what we can see there, but he played it pretty well. The, the, the rakes here this week um, leave quite uh, sort of thick grooves in the bunker. Um, which makes it, I think, a bit more difficult. This is Justin Rose at five. Got a ball sitting down in the first cut. 102 yards, Kurt, back into the breeze. Needs to get up. Oh, lands on the down slope. Yep. A little unlucky. Probably <laughs> carried it about two, three or four yards further into that green that he wanted and caught the down slope Just to 12. It just proves how important hitting the fairway is, doesn't it? Sure does. Ian Poulter would be the first to get to three under if this goes. Oh, almost, almost took a look in there to the right. So Poulter's going to remain at two under par. Poulter and Rose. We are in. So many holes carved out just around and amongst these dunes. Just a great protected feel to so much of your play. Spieth, good look here, second shot. 168, ball came to rest directly on top of one of these mounds. That would be tough to do on purpose. This one a little left of the hole. Oh, yeah. Very nice. I walked a bunch with Jordan Spieth on Tuesday and Wednesday, and the putting looked great. And his heart to will the ball in the hole is so good. Jordan Spieth looked very strong this week. So does that right about now at 10.30. Toast and coffee hold you over to lunchtime. Sideways, it looked exactly like the open when we came on the air four hours ago. It is dried out. The breeze is up. It's ugly weather for tomorrow with rain and wind. So maybe now the best chance to score here heading towards the weekend. Ian Poulter here in his native country leads by one shot, 32, two under on the front. We see a lot of big names that you know sitting there at one under and even. Been a good start with about 40% of the field starting. Mike Tirico along with the seven time in a row European Order of Merit champion. Hall of Famer, Colin Montgomery, Tom Abbott, Kurt Byron join us in the towers. Nota Begay, Billy Ray Brown, Jerry Fultz on the course. Todd Lewis talking to the players before they tee off. Ed Johnson from the RNA Rules Committee sorts out any issues we need to deal with. So glad you are joining us here this morning. Let's get right back to the golf. Jordan Spieth, terrific second shot. Chance to tie for the lead. Dan, not a tough putt here, turning a little left. Both fellow competitors missed their birdie efforts. That was a odd. Either a little too much pace or a little too much break. Either way, disappointing for Jordan. That scramble with the 30 at two. A terrific second shot in there. He wants another look back at the read there at three. He'll stay at one under par. Opportunity missed. This is at the tenth, and Ian Poulter's third shot. That was just from under 50 yards. And that is a terrific par save from Ian Poulter, and he will stay at two under par. Obviously not in a good lie off the tee, but he's going to walk away with a four. Let's go to five. And Arban Lahiri with a birdie. All pars until then, so he's off to a good start. 67th ranked player in the world. 
to three. And Henrik Stenson for par. This one slightly back uphill, and like so many putts out here, very little break. Start here. Let's go see Todd Lewis. Todd, who are you with? Now yeah, with Andrew Johnston, officially known as B, finished eighth at the Open last year at Royal True. And considering your success last year, how excited are you to kick off the 2017 Open this morning? Yeah, of course, man. Very excited. <laughs> but I know it's a different, different year, um, year on. So I can't expect it to be the same as last year. Still got to go out and play. It's a different course. But I'm looking forward to it. The course is awesome. And it's nice and windy, man. <laughs> we were talking about the broadcast, considering the forecast for tomorrow is rain and even more wind. How important is today to put up a solid number? It does help, yeah, because if, if you don't shoot a great one and then you have to try and play catch up tomorrow and it's worse, it's so hard. And if you can, if you can have a good one today and then you have a bit of a cushion in some sort of a way, then you can... You can play maybe something a bit different, maybe take a bogey where you're not trying to push and trying to hit a miracle shot and end up making six because you're trying to make the cut or trying to get further up the leaderboard, so it does help. Uh, you grew up in this part of the world. You played some Lynx golf. What do you enjoy about playing in conditions like this on a Lynx course like Royal Birkdale? It's just different to what you usually play, you know. It's, the, ball, the ball's running a lot. It's usually firm and fast. I know it's had quite a bit of rain. Um, I think you've got to be creative. You can hit... You can hit anything from 140 yards. You can hit a seven iron to a five iron, and that depending on how someone sees it, and that you can shape it a lot more. I just think, I think it's something different, and you can get really creative, man. Enjoy, have fun. I know you will out there. Cheers, thanks, man. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Beef hits the first tee shot tomorrow morning at 6:30. So, join us for that. Did you? Tommy Fleetwood has this for birdie. Now, you see the graphic here, you see if he wants to hit it harder, obviously it's straight. And if he wants to lag it like he has done, he's got to go up the left-hand side. Very good graphic there to show the two paces. That's why it's so difficult to read a putt for someone else, because how hard is he going to hit it? Tier 4, Jason, uh, Jordan Speed. Signal there was a 6-iron breeze from the left flag, really not moving, but it's up there. That looked good from the get-go, just a half a bat short. No problem with that, though, Jerry. No, no, no. Fourth hole plays about 30 feet downhill from the tee to the green. And there's a look yep. at the bunkering. Um, bunker on the right today, getting a bit more action than those on the left, but the way the hole is cut. And looking back at the tee, a few clouds drifting below the plane. How's the breeze out there at the moment, Jerry? Not too bad. It's uh, it's actually the temperature has dropped in the last couple hours, just a few degrees. Not too bad. It's not terribly uncomfortable at all. It is open weather because it's still a bit blustery and it's not warm, but it's certainly dry and that's a blessing. This morning was really difficult. Hendrick Stenson going with six iron as well. I never understand why people come to the open and then watch it on TV. <laughs> I'm with you. I, 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 I don't understand that. If you come to the open, get on the course and watch the golf. I think they just want to hear the commentary, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> well, this oh, looks dear. promising in the air. Oh, oh. very strong. <laughs> Stenson is off and running in his title defense as the champ. The busiest but best year. Shot. Ooh. Tremendous shot. We'll have that to jump up to 200, get a birdie birdie start. Back to two. Yeah, we've just seen this putt, so let's see if Hideki Matsuyama can figure it out better than Tommy Fleetwood. Not nearly enough speed. Oh, got fell in love with the line and forgot. The most important part. <laughs> I mean, that happens to pros, too. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> that one Shane Lowry, the 30-year-old Irishman, playing in his sixth open. Yeah. He was asking a lot three hours ago to open up with a birdie. Number one was playing like a 
a par five or a par six, if you will, was playing that hard for the first three or four groups. But we've seen more birdies of late. And Lowry joins the group with a three at number one. And Tom Lehman survived a, a bogey at once, had a pretty good round. Here he is at 14. I beg your pardon, this is at 13. Yeah, just a birdie putt there, Mike, going missing. The man playing in his 21st open. He missed the cut in 98 here at Birkdale and finished 32nd in 2008. Of course, the champion at Royal Lytham in 96, where he beat Ernie Ailes and Mark McCumber by two shots. Ian Poulter has the lead here. Five-hour time change between the East Coast and here in Southport, England. So it's just coming up to a quarter to 11 in the morning, but plenty of golf left uh, today. The final tee time is 16 minutes past four. So they'll, they'll be playing until 9 p.m. local time, four o'clock on the East Coast. We'll go out uh, to the fourth and Kim's second. Interesting club selection there. Could have easily put it up through that fringe and let it trundle on over, but as it is, five feet remaining for par. This is the 11th tee. Poulter with less than driver here. Yeah, he's going to have to tag this one, Kurt, even if he's going to get to the fairway. That bunker down the right side is just over 300 yards, but uh, finds the rough. Shouldn't be terrible. Leaves himself a long way in there. That was, uh, you said he necked it off the tee, and if you hit a wrong club and neck it, you, you know, into that left to right wind, he's struggling. Well, Spieth has made a good start, and he's got another birdie putt coming up. Yeah, outside chance of one here. Not a little bit longer range putt. Shoulder coming off that front right green side bunker will kick it a little left earlier than it might die just right at the very end. Playing in his fifth open, he says he's seen a bit of everything now. He knows what to expect. All sorts of different conditions and the way that the golf courses play. And we'll go back to three. And Justin Thomas has a long birdie attempt. Yeah, pretty slow coming back up the hill. And at the very end, it'll start turning just a bit to the right. Right, good speed. Yeah. Eleven. Poulter from the rough at eleven. And trying to belt something up there. Does a nice job. A tough hole location to get close to from that distance. He'd be happy on the green. Hang on. I think that'll be okay. There's a little ridge you can't see there, a spine that runs through that 11th green that he'll have to deal with. And back over at the fourth hole, Henrik Stenson has this putt as they uh, watch on from the Spectator Village, which is a busy, busy place. Plenty of things going on down there. Stenson with a putt for a two. Putt that should turn a little left. Plenty of uh, spectators out here as well, and so many natural uh, viewing areas on the sides of these slopes to get a great vantage point to watch this. I guess you call him one of the premier groups today. Chief executive of the RNA, Martin Slumbers, is hoping for over 220,000 people to attend, which would be a record at Birkdale. short just a three for Stenson who returned to the claret jug earlier this week as a, a tradition at the open back to three and Rose for birdie doesn't get much easier than this straight back up the hill inside left yeah. uh, what a start birdies two of the first three Here in England, two Englishmen, two under par in the early go. Tied for the lead. We're ahead one at four. And now 
Kim for his par. And one of those putts, Colin, that uh, they're just, you, I heard you describe it, one from Poulter earlier, they're just hugely important, even though it's just an early stage, five foot or six footer to save par. Well, it is very much so, and uh, he knows it too. Six foot putt. Fairly simple under normal conditions, but this isn't normal. This is the open, and he's done a good job. And the 22 year old who's ranked 32nd in the world. Yes, a level par as they make the walk behind the Artisan Clubhouse there on the right hand side. The Artisan Club is a, an important part of Royal Birkdale, which we will hear more about as the week goes on. This is Padraig Harrington for birdie at five. Not to be. Padraig won here in 2008. Shot three over that week. O'Meara, when he won here, he shot even par. A good start for Harrington. Played very well last week. Top five finish. Scottish Open. Justin Rose on the tee at four. This is a five iron. Wind hard from left to right, 193 yards, trying to hold it back into this breeze. Wow, oh, wow, air mailed the green there. Where did it finish, Billy Ray? It hit a tree behind the green wow. and, and came to rest. I think he caught a pretty good big break there. He caught the tree and dropped straight down, not into the heavy stuff, I believe. I'm surprised when it said five on because uh, Jordan Spieth hit six, Denson hit seven, so a five. Pulling it left, of course, is going to de deal off the club and make it even worse. So. There aren't many trees on the golf course, so he did well to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's one lone tree, small tree, just behind this flag stick, and he hit one of the branches and dropped straight down, I believe. Very, very fortunate. From our vantage point, Billy Ray, it looks like he, he's going to be far enough away to at least be able to play a shot there, uh, Justin Rose. Now, Thomas. And that was a six iron for Thomas, and that could influence the shot he plays here. Oh, he's played oh, a beautiful. Shot. Just started left of the hole and just hit a perfect shot. It rode the wind perfectly. This is Stenson at the fifth with an iron. Short little dog leg right, playing for position, playing with a lot of discipline. Not a surprise, I guess. Left center of the fairway here. So many of the players have been talking about that. Staying disciplined, sticking to a game plan. Obviously, Stenson has one in mind. He's hit, uh, what, Jerry, like three irons off the tee already today. Exactly. Yeah, he's, uh, he, like I said, he's got a game plan. He's going to stick to it. Don't need to take a whole lot of chances because the score doesn't need to be that low come the end of the week, it doesn't appear. Colin Jordan Spieth has been pretty much on his game coming off that win in mm -hmm. Hartford at the Travelers. He came in here as one of the favorites. Um, I'm sure through the years you came into the Open as one of the favorites. What's that mm -hmm. feel like? Uh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're second favorite to Tiger. <laughs> Yeah, being yeah, in no. the Tiger area was not yeah. area was not a good thing, was it? Ah, it was a horrible time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Again, an iron for an iron for Jordan Spieth. He's leaked it right, though, unfortunately. Yeah. There's a bit of trouble over there. Webbing uh, iron in the bag this week, based on the conditions. A lot of them adjust according to the wind direction. Today, Spieth has one in the bag. Right now, and myself, <laughs> even me. Lunch, lunch options for later, boys. <laughs> but if you eat those, you can't wear these. No, Justin you Thomas can't. and four. You can't look this good if you eat, eat that lot. <laughs> he thought he was going to come back, didn't he? And it stayed out to the right. But a good par from Justin Thomas. Yeah, it's going to mark, but it's going to decide to putt out. Meantime, our co-leader's at 12, the par 3. Holter tee shot on the way. Uh, starting at the hole, wind pushing it left. Just love the look of Poulter, the, the in contention again, that energy, the good feelings he has from the last couple of months and the return here to Royal Burkdale. He was the runner-up last time we played the Open here. Four. 
This would be a terrific par for Rose. It certainly was. Yeah, the break that he had, and now he makes par, and that could have been disaster there for Rose there, Tom. Yeah, and uh, the difference is he makes a par, and he's two under and tied for the lead. 17. Stuart Manley from the greenside bunker, third shot to this par five. Oh, oh. yes. Oh, thank you very much. Stuart Manley going out and playing a great round of golf. That gets him to one under par on the round, one hole to play. This was just a moment ago, Jordan Spieth at five. Downhill or turning right the whole way. Too much speed. It's amazing, Kurt. He knew he missed it just about as soon as he hit it, and it still hit the lip. Yeah. That's what I was thinking myself. There. I was thinking when I when I walk after the ball, I've missed it, and I know I've missed it. He he walked after it and almost went in. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a difference! All right, let's see if Kim can make one. Probably learned a little bit from Jordan's putt. You got to keep it a hair further left than Jordan did. Yeah, Jordan started his about a cup outside. This one a little shorter, I'd say a cup outside would be just about right. Mm. Just didn't have the speed for that line. Just ran out of speed, Jerry. You see the difference in the confidence as well. You see Jordan's speed balls gone, gone by three and a half foot there. The confidence, and yet that... Leader alone here at the championships opening stages. And then we talked about all the local support. Tommy Fleetwood, second here at number one. Fourth at the U.S. Open, winner in between then and now at the French. The rope nearby didn't play a lot here. At nine, it's Knox. Russell Knox misses this par putt. So he will drop back one to 35 for that first nine and one over par to start his championship. Let's jump up to the third. Jordan Speeth off the birdie already hit. Now Hendrick Stenson. Jordan Speeth played first. He laid back from the fairway bunkers as well in very good shape, right center of the fairway. And Stenson shot away. Yeah, watching it closely. Signal was good. I lost it in the graying skies. That's going to be just fine. It appears to me he's got a game plan for this specific win, and he's going to stick to it. Now you need one, though, don't you? You need a game plan. There's no point in going out and just giving it a whirl. You have to think your way around here. This is the second hole. Justin Thomas has it in the fairway. 170 yards, played iron off the tee, Kurt. And starts this ball right at the flag, actually, with that hole location on the right-hand side. Little draw. Oh, interesting. He looked like he was set up. His feet, shoulders, everything a little left. Good shot. Well, we've got a little bit of shelter here. Yeah, really well struck there. So five players now under par with a couple of birdies here in the last few minutes. Rose off to a good start there, birdieing the first. Speed the course, making that 18. Would it one? Just his birdie attempt, and let's see if he can get the pace right off the bat. You take a four, the birdie's a real bonus. It's a good line. Great start from Tommy Fleetwood. That'll settle him down, making a four here at the first. The expectation on his shoulders. Big, big crowds you see watching this particular group. And the tee at the tenth. The impulse is going with an iron here, Nota. Yeah, trying to play for position when pushing hard off the left. Oh, oh and this is not one of his better right. swings today. Ah! Well, a little bit further up, you can see the grass is not as thick, but I think he's not been fortunate enough to get into that wispy stuff. Maybe in a thicker lie, we'll have to find out. This is at the 11th, Matthew Fitzpatrick's second shot, 22-year-old. A great year last 
last year, sixth in the race to Dubai, played on the Ryder Cup team for Europe. Not his best there. That is pretty lush on the side of that hill. We'll have to see what kind of shot he comes up with. Back to the first. And number two in the world, Hideki Matsuyama. Trying to open with a birdie. Brooks Kepka at Aaron Hills in the U.S. Open. Matter of fact, you got first, second, and fourth here from the U.S. Open, all in this group with Kepka, Matsuyama, and Tommy Fleetwood. Brian Harmon, the other man in that top four, he plays in about a couple of hours, two and a half hours. This is Rose at the second for Birdie. Good speed. A lot of people's favorite this week, Justin Rose, not just because of his heroics in 1998 but he's won one of these majors before he knows how to do it and uh, I like the ball flight Justin Rose has and yeah, the Olympic gold medalist a proud moment for him there we could run for Tom Lehman here today and at 12 he makes that birdie to get back to even par. So you see all the pars Lehman had. A lot of people dropping a shot at the sixth. That's really good playing from Tom so far. It is. One for our PJ Tour champions as we get back to the second hole and see Justin Thomas for his birdie here at the second. The easy par back at the first. See if he can cash this one in. And he gets red figures. Good start there for Thomas. Absolutely. It's a, a mental boost to get off to a nice start like that when you're trying so hard to three. And the second for Siwoo Kip. 201 yards of the hole, lying down grain. Very nice lie in the rough. Playing downwind with the lie in the rough a little bit. I think the plan was front edge at best. It flew it a little deeper, but it didn't have too much trouble setting down. Not bad, giving a little jump and downwind, that combo. So much to calculate on these shots in these conditions, Colin. Well, it is. It's just not the lie you're going to think about, the wind as well, and how it's going to react on the green. Are they drying out? Are they still damp? There's, you know, there's six or seven points to every shot here. Justin Leonard made a point earlier, too, Colin. He said, what you players pay this course the highest compliment and that it's fair. And one of the qualifications from that, in his words, were that your bounces are a little more predictable here at Birkdale than other open road courses. The greens and the green surrounds are relatively flat, and that's what they mean by this. You see that shot there? That did, did what it's supposed to do. It didn't hit any any adverse down slopes or up slopes or whatever and run off. That was, that was exactly where that shot was aimed and hit and stopped. 